So during the time that this is being recorded, well, not right at the time, but during this time period, this week, the new Spider-Man, Tom Holland Spider-Man trailer was finally released. And I will admit, I am more excited than a man my age probably should be. Because growing up, I was a you know, really big Marvel guy. I mean, I read a little bit of Batman and Superman and whatnot, but I was squarely on Team Marvel back then. And Spider-Man was my all-time favorite superhero, and still is. I will say I have been pleasantly surprised with how well the Captain America films have turned out. Um, I read a little bit of Captain America and Falcon as a kid, not a lot. Um, but I, I owned a book and record of starring those two, if you remember those. Yeah, I'm old, shut up. A couple of things I didn't notice until I got older was first, Falcon's original costume really heavy on the stereotypes. Also, um, Falcon got lucky that he was able to escape that time period and not be called Black Falcon. Because apparently in the late 60s, early 70s, the only way you could be black and a superhero is if your name started with black or some variation thereof. I mean, it seemed like it was everywhere, you know, Black Lightning, Black Talon, Black Goliath, Black Luke Cage. No, wait, he escaped that too. And I can't help but imagine, you know, when Falcon first teamed up with Captain America, uh, this weird Blazing Saddles-like scenario, you know, minus the excessive flatulence and use of the N-word, of course, where everyone kept calling him Black Falcon, and it just made him more and more frustrated. Oh, it's Captain America and Black Falcon. We're saved. Thank you, citizens. But it's just Falcon. You're too late, Captain America and Black Falcon. Yeah, we'll see about that. Also, it's just Falcon. Just Falcon. Look out for Captain America's shield and Black Falcon's pet bird, Wing. No, man, it's just Falcon. And the bird's name is Red... Wait, really? You may have won this time, Captain America and Black Falcon, but this is far from over. Come on, shit, it's just Falcon. Just Falcon. You racist bunch of assholes. Nice work, Black Falcon. Man, fuck you, Cap. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the mole unit. Uh, now that I'm about, what, 20 odd episodes in, I guess I should finally get around to talking about the thing that usually gives students the most trouble early on, shouldn't I? Um, actually, back when I did the old Google Hangout version that um, preceded the current format, I, th I did cover it then, but I never got around to doing it. Except I did a little bit of limiting reagent stuff, but that was just about it. So today we're going to talk a little bit about just general gram to mole conversions and really how they're not any different from the conversions you did back in chapter one. You know, the whole point that we talked about doing dimensional analysis to convert between one unit and another wasn't to give you a generic math review. It's because for the bulk of general one, that's the type of math you're going to do. Really, until you get to doing some solve for X algebra for when we do gas law stuff, it's pretty much all converting one unit to another unit. So a lot of people, they'll be comfortable doing that stuff in chapter one, but a few chapters later, we start throwing in chemical terms like moles and molar mass. People uh, just forget stuff they'd already, they thought they knew. Um, or they thought they knew it, but they didn't really know it. So if you are getting stuck, um, and nothing that I'm about to say makes any sense, you should probably go back and review dimensional analysis and make sure you really got that down because really if you understand how to do that um, it's the same again, it's the same stuff same stuff different units and to kind of show you that I'm gonna do a couple of examples um, yeah and some I'm also, I'll start doing a just a generic chapter one type of conversion and then I'll show you a very very similar uh, chemical reaction type of conversion. Um, so to start with, let's just look at the conversion of 20 miles to kilometers. 
So, um, you know, a typical conversion factor that you're given for this type of conversion is that one mile is 1.609 kilometers. So you start with the number that you're given. So we start with 20 miles. And we want to get rid of the mile unit because we want kilometers. And our conversion factor has miles and kilometers in it. So if we multiply it by, um, in a fraction form, you know, with kilometers on top, miles on the bottom, you know, just like we talked about back in chapter one, the mile unit drops out and we're left with units of kilometers. Now compare that to a mole conversion where you have 20 moles of carbon and you want to convert that to grams of carbon. So about this time is when you learn about molar mass and carbon's molar mass is 12.01 grams per mole. All that means is that one mole of carbon equals that many grams. So again, you start with the number we're given, 20 moles of carbon, and we want to convert moles to grams. Molar mass has those two units there. So you know, we can multiply it by molar mass, you know, grams on top, moles on the bottom, mole unit drops out, and we're left with an answer in grams of carbon. And you'll notice I didn't just write the unit, I wrote the unit and the thing we're talking about, because really quickly we start doing sort of mole to mole types of conversions, like stoichiometry, and it really helps if you do include the unit and the thing you're talking about just to make sure that you are canceling out the, the exact same units. So it can be as clear as you can with your work and you won't skip any steps or whatnot. Also put the units down. Most of the time when I grade exams and a student shows me their work, if I don't see any units, I can tell right away that they're probably going to get something wrong, if not the whole problem. So again, the clearer you are with your work, the better it is for you and honestly your teacher when they're trying to read your chicken scratch. But let's look at another example. Let's say that apples cost $2.30 a dozen and you want to know how much 135 apples cost. So we start with 135 apples and the Dollar to amount work conversion is per dozen, but you know what the dozen unit is. You have a dozen of anything, you have 12. So if you have a dozen apples, you have 12 apples. And if you show that as a unit conversion, the apple unit drops out. Now we can use the cost per um, to convert dozens to dollars. And you set it up as a unit conversion, the dozens drop out. Now we're in the unit we want and we can get our answer. So compare that to this example where you have 44.01 grams per mole of carbon dioxide and you want to know the mass of 3.2 times 10 to the 24 carbon dioxide molecules. So you start with the number we're given which is the number of molecules and just like a dozen always equals 12 no matter what you're talking about apples, eggs, whatever. If you have a mole of anything, you have Avogadro's number worth of that thing. You know, a mole of eggs is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 eggs. A mole of apples is that many apples. A mole of molecules is that many molecules. So you set it up this way, the molecule, molecule unit drops out. Now we can use molar mass just like we did a second ago to convert moles to grams. And that gives us an answer in grams. So this one in particular, just look at those two and notice how similar they are. You, know, you, um, you convert the individual thing to the counting unit, dozens or moles. And then you convert that to you know, either dollars or grams because you know the cost per dozen or the mass per mole get really similar types of conversions. Just don't let the chemistry throw you. So with that in mind, let's look at one more. I actually know two more. I forgot I had another one planned. But let's say a dining room set has four chairs. And you want to know how many chairs are in five sets. So you got five sets. Uh, there are four chairs per set. 
And you know, even without doing the dimensional analysis, you come up with 20 chairs because that's math that you're familiar with or units that you're familiar with. Uh, but again, the reason you multiply is because you have you know, four chairs per one set, showing that as a unit conversion, when you write it that way, the set unit drops out. Although I do notice that I forgot to plural one, but you know, plurals, singular, sets, set, same difference. Um, but anywho, now compare that to this problem where you want to know how many moles of oxygen are in 4.5 moles of carbon dioxide. Right. Well, we, we know we have four and a half moles of the thing, the compound. And just by looking at the formula, we can see that there are two oxygens for every one CO2. Just like you look at that dining room set, if it was real, um, you can see four chairs, one dining room set. You look at the formula, two oxygens, one CO2. And that two to one ratio, that's true whether you're talking about one molecule or a dozen molecules or a mole of molecules. If you have a mole of CO2, you've got two moles of oxygen. And you write it that way, that gives you nine moles. Whoops, jumped ahead of that. So now let's look at one more where we kind of put it all together. No chapter one problem this time. Let's just look at a typical uh, chemical reaction mold type of problem. All right, let's say you want to figure out how many grams of methane, which is what we call CH4 there, um, that contain 1.7 times 10 to the 24 hydrogen atoms. So again, starting with the unit you're given, you got that many atoms of hydrogen. So one way you could do it would, you know, just like we said a second ago, you look at that formula, you see four hydrogens for every one carbon, or one methane rather. So use that as a conversion factor. That'll get rid of the atoms, hydrogen unit, now we're in units of molecules of methane. Um, and again, to, go, to go get to grams, we need to be in moles. But again, a mole of anything is that many molecules of that thing, or that many atoms if we're talking about atoms. All right, so if you have a mole of methane, you've got Avogadro's numbers worth of methane molecules. So now we're in moles of methane. And whenever you want to go between moles and grams, you always use molar mass. So methane's molar mass, is 16.04 grams per mole, and that will give you 11 grams of methane. And for this problem, there's actually another way that we can kind of work through it. You know, in this case, we went from atoms to molecules, but you know, again, a mole of you know, anything is Avogadro's number worth. So you could have started with atoms of hydrogen and converted that to moles of hydrogen, then converted moles of hydrogen to moles of methane, kind of like we did in the previous problem. Because again, that one to four ratio is true whether you're talking about a molecule or, or a mole of the stuff. And just like before, now we're in moles, we can use molar mass to go from grams to moles, or moles to grams rather. And you know, we still get 11. Because if you look at those middle two conversions, it's the same conversions. We're still dividing by Avogadro's number and dividing by four. We just flipped it around because we kind of approached the units a little differently. But still, I mean, it's just two different ways to get the same answer. And they're basically, again, you're starting with the unit you're given. Try to get rid of it. And at this point, you know, we're really doing the same unit conversions over and over again. You know, in chapter one, I mean, it's, it's pretty much any unit conversion under the sun. You, know, you, you, know, you might have done just you know, um, you know, imperial to metric, metric of one thing to metric of something else. Uh, just any old you know, conversion. Uh, but once we started getting into chemical reactions and moles, I mean at this point we're really doing the same three conversions just over and over and over again. All right, we're doing grams to moles using molar mass. Uh, you know, moles of one thing to moles of something else by looking at the formula or later on looking at the coefficients when we get into stoichiometry or you know individual things to uh, moles using Avogadro's number. So, so same three unit conversions we're just doing over and over again in different ways. 
And really, once we get deep into the chemical reaction stuff, uh, we're not really doing a lot on the atomic level. So really, as soon as we get to stoichiometry, for the most part, um, we're really just doing two conversions, grams to moles and moles to moles, over and over and over again. And then in the next chapter, when we talk about solutions, you know, we add, talk about molarity, so we add a conversion to that. And then we kind of, the next couple of chapters, we'll add to the little stoichiometry pile. But in the end, we're really only doing a handful, maybe a handful plus a finger worth of unit conversions. So just once you understand how to do unit conversions, just the chapter one unit conversions, it's the same type of conversions, just variations on a theme, if you will. So that'll do it for now. Um, we will talk about something else later. Bye bye Seriously, man, I don't know how much longer I can do this. They're driving me nuts. Yeah, I know, Apache Chief. You got it worse than I do. I mean, that outfit and what they make you say? Uh, we chucked it. Does that even mean anything? Is that real Apache? Oh, it is. Huh? What does it really mean? <laughs> oh, man, that's great. That's great. Uh, look, man, I got to go. We still on for poker this weekend? All right, cool. No, don't worry about it. It's not your night. Yeah, Shang-Chi, it's his turn to bring beer. Right. Yeah, Egg Fu, he's going to bring the pizza. Cool. All right, man. See you then. Bye. Click.